uh, my specialties are actually uh, skincare products and uh, non-surgical uh, body uh, shaping, but I'm also a cosmetic dermatologist, um, a specialist in uh, hair uh, treatments, uh, skin treatments, and uh, laser. Uh, so today's lecture, as we announced on uh, Facebook, is really uh, regarding acne. Uh, we thought that it's time for most of the people going back to school, so a lot of the teenagers and a lot of the also adult acnes are suffering because of this, so I thought we'll do some health education regarding it. Okay, so uh, what is uh, acne? Um, basically, it happens when an oily substance called sebum clots. So we have pores in our skin and we have oil glands. And these oil glands uh, produce um, uh, sebum, or um, you know, in the late uh, terminology, it's called oily. Okay. And then there's um, uh, there's um, several stages of acne. Uh, one the, one of the problems is causing comedons, and we call them the blackheads and the whiteheads. And basically, these pores that um, actually drain these um, uh, sebum production get clogged with keratin, which is the type of uh, top layer of the skin. So it actually clogs it and it uh, prevents it from uh, going out its regular path and this causes them to have blackheads and uh, if it's a little bigger it's called whiteheads and we call them initially like it's uh, comedones. Uh, there are several factors uh, to uh, acne. Like I said, uh, the keratinization. Uh, there's a bacterium uh, that uh, also contributes uh, to, to this. Uh, there's hormonal causes and that's why we see it with teenagers. There's a surge of their hormones when they um, uh, start showing uh, their differentiation. And uh, this causes them uh, to have a surge in their acne. And this is why you see all the pimples in that age. You get a lot of people asking me, saying that um, I'm an adult, I'm not a teenager anymore, or why I have it. Some people continue to have this problem. Um, because we have sex hormones. Where are the common areas that you see them? Uh, you see them on the face. Uh, some people have it on the chest, some people have it on the upper back, and some people also have it like full on back and shoulders. Uh, this is uh, the most uh, common areas where they have it. But so you'll see that uh, most likely your parents had acne, one of your parents had acne, or your aunts or your uncles, uh, they had acne. So there is, there is a genetic factor, but it's all, not the only uh, factor. Okay, next, so through them, the blackheads and the whiteheads, this is how they look like. Uh, these are the blackheads, especially in Ikea. A lot of people come to me because of the nose part, where it's like small dots of black, and this is uh, part of the blackhead, but also I see it in the top of the uh, skin, and uh, beside the nose and on the chin. Uh, this is where it's usually concentrated, and then you have the white ones um, as well, and it's the same part. Mm -hmm. Next. Okay, so these are the next stage uh, of it, or it can be a stage on its own, where it's called papules uh, uh, or inflammatory pimples. So basically, these are either red or they're red and they have pus in them, and we call it inflammatory acne. Um, this is a different, and these, why are these, um, why is it important to mention all this? Because even when we're doing the treatments, there's a difference um, in how we treat these, uh, uh, these uh, problems. So the inflammatory acne is actually handled in a different way than the comedonal acne, which is the blackheads and the whiteheads. So these are just how they look like. Now the, 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 the severe type is actually the nodular type or the cystic type, and these usually scar. Uh, and they cause actually permanent scarring. And these are the most uh, difficult to treat actually, because they need really um, um, uh, strong treatment in order for us to, uh, to control it. So basically these people form cysts, and most of the time they're very painful. And after they're gone, they usually have uh, scarring. But some of people also with the inflammatory acne, they can also have permanent scarring. Are always so frustrated with uh, acne treatment because they always want one cream, one thing, and they want it to be vanishing forever. I always talk to my patient and I tell them there's only uh, two pathways uh, to treat uh, acne. So I have a control path and then uh, everything, uh, and then a cure path. The control path means that everything I use in that uh, category, uh, as long as you're using it, and as long as you're on this kind of treatment, your acne is controlled, meaning it becomes subside. Like it uh, becomes, um, uh, we can actually get rid of the blackheads, we can get rid of the whiteheads, uh, we can control more uh, the inflammatory types, but this is not the cystic type. The cystic type is not easily controlled in the control path either. And uh, it doesn't mean that when I'm placing my patients on the uh, control path, that they won't get acne, because we're not stopping it from within, 
most of the time we're stopping it uh, just uh, like uh, from outside whatever is there. Uh, so um, they definitely, uh, part acne becomes part of your life. I always tell my patients that they're going to be their own doctors. Uh, that means they'll understand how to deal with their skin. They'll understand with time how they're going uh, to control uh, their acne, and it becomes part of their daily routine, like brushing uh, their teeth. Uh, so, so I always tell them to be compliant to treatments, and I always ask them to be patient with the treatments. Most of the topical treatments take almost a month for it to start working, uh, and then after it starts working, uh, you have to be on it uh, for a long period of time. Uh, the cure, uh, to, in order to cure acne, there's actually one medication, but it's a very uh, strong uh, treatment. It has a lot of uh, side effects, and it also needs a lot of monitoring, very close monitoring. Um, and usually, we don't like using it unless uh, there is permanent damage to the skin, where uh, the person is actually forming uh, scars. And actually, as doctors, we like to only indicate it for, for that type of acne because of all the side effects of, uh, of that medication. Um, other than that, other than that medication, basically everything else is not uh, curable but controllable. I actually go through their skin uh, regimen that they already on, and maybe we just need to do some adjustments or add certain things uh, to it, but not necessarily we totally eliminate everything they're using. Uh, sometimes they are using uh, good things, but uh, they need more. Uh, so we go through that uh, with them, so I can go with them what they need to use uh, at home. And then uh, after that, we start, I, I see if, what kind of medications, either topical or oral, that I can give them in order for, to help them to control their acne. And then the last stage would be the in-clinic treatment. So uh, sometimes I boost them uh, with using uh, treatments such as uh, dermal, uh, dermacytic. They have a, um, a special type of, uh, of uh, peel uh, that we use in order for us to help uh, quicker uh, the response to the treatments because it clears them uh, faster and that usually helps with the, with the uh, compliance because when patients feel that they're seeing results quicker they feel that they are more uh, uh, more happy about continuing uh, the treatment when they see the results but when, they, when the results take a longer period of time usually sometimes they give up in the middle and they just stop uh, uh, the treatment and they start looking uh, from one doctor to another, yeah, I go with them through the cleansers, uh, I'm using uh, oil, uh, cleansers for oily skin. But I prefer cleansers for acne skin. Uh, sometimes they use too much uh, of uh, the cleanser, so they become dry, and that causes them to have this uh, layer of flakiness on their skin. And this flakiness might also clog the pores because it's dead skin again on top of the pores and it closes it. So it might have a, a, um, a um, opposite effect of what they're actually trying to do. So cleansers, I like only for them to use it twice a day. So in the morning, because that's when you wake up and you power up, most of the time I put patients on uh, medications. So they just need to wash their face before they start their day. And then I like, to, I like them to cleanse their face at night. Uh, because when they clean at night, you have a lot of debris, the sweats, uh, you go out, there's a lot of environmental uh, factors, sometimes you have makeup on, so you really need to cleanse your skin and clear those pores so that they don't get blocked uh, at night. And also it makes a clean, clean canvas uh, for the person to be able to put their night treatments. Uh, and that gives them more absorption and it gets them to, um, to, uh, to benefit from the medications or whatever uh, things that we give them at night better. Okay, uh, so usually it needs to be in a, either in a gel form uh, or in a foam form or the newer types of cleanser which is the mister solutions. Okay, sorry about cleansers, you have to stay away from milk cleansers uh, for oily skin or acne prone skin and you have to stay away from lotion cleansers uh, because that will be too thick and too greasy and uh, uh, on your skin, so it doesn't actually uh, do it uh, good. Usually we use the milk cleansers and the lotions for dry skin. Uh, so it doesn't really benefit acne skin. And the other thing, every product that you actually look into, anything that you apply on your skin, if you're acne prone, then you have to, it has to have the label, non comedogenic on it, and uh, also uh, non for body or for acne prone skin. If it does not have that on the label, then you cannot use it. Including makeup, that also has to be on the label, okay? Because sometimes the medications that we apply uh, on our patients who have acne, uh, they can cause a little bit of dryness because there might be a vitamin A uh, derivative 
Uh, so they might feel that they need a little bit of a hydration in the morning, or maybe a little bit their friends are a little too uh, drying for them. Uh, and maybe we do actually need to dry them because the comedones, sometimes I need to use the crap that day. So we give them hydration. The hydration has to also be for acne prone skin, so a specific kind of hydration. You cannot just use any kind of cream because definitely you might clog and you will get your acne to become worse. So the hydration is usually water based and the hydration is usually very light, either in a fluid form, a gel form, or a very light lotion. And I like to only tell them to put it on uh, the dry areas. So you only apply it on the dry areas. You don't need to apply it all over the face because patients with acne who are oily skin already are naturally hydrated. They're already naturally moisturized, so they didn't need to over moisturize. But with the, if there is a little bit of change in the balance of their skin, so using the proper hydration is fine. Okay? So now sunscreens, sunscreens are important, especially in skin in the Middle East and Asian skin and North uh, African skin, uh, because we can easily pigment. Okay? And getting uh, acne after it actually results in some patients, they get brown pimples, uh, brown uh, pimples, brown brown spots. So these brown spots actually get worse with our sun here in uh, Saudi Arabia because we have very strong sun, so it gets darker. And that's why I like to put them still on uh, sunscreen. But they cannot just use any kind of sunscreen. As I said, it has to say non comedogenic on it. It also has to say non pore clogging or acne prone skin. So either or. Um, and if it doesn't say that, it has to also, you can't, uh, you can't use it. And luckily in this day and age, we actually have uh, sunscreen that says for acne prone skin. So it's specifically for acne patients. Um, and um, they are either, again, they come either in form of liquid or in the form of very light lotion. And now even it's a form of sprays. The acne prone skin are based oily skin. Uh, they actually have a shine in the middle of the face. So at that time, I actually don't mind if they use a mattifier uh, because these mattifiers actually control uh, their sebum production. So they usually, I like to, I like to tell, tell them to use it if it's, they're very shiny, to use it midday. So they put it on the T-zone area. Okay. Uh, serums with uh, acne prone skin because serums have um, active ingredients and they have a lot of antioxidants and we like them to be used uh, at night before you go to bed and I still like to use it with even acne prone skin because it gives them a little bit of brightening, gives them a little bit of a, of a healthier uh, glow. I have a lot of questions regarding toners because uh, a lot of patients they think that they have to do this so they have to wash their face in the morning, they have to tone their skin they have to moisturize and then they have to put the sunscreen. Now, sometimes this could be too tiring for the skin because some of the toners have a lot of, some toners have acids, some toners have extra um, drying materials. So you don't really have to use a toner, but if you are the type that likes to use a toner, also again, it has to be for acne prone skin, and then you can use it um, during midday. I like to use it midday, so it gives a little bit of refreshment, you're a little bit oily, uh, you're kind of upset that you're shiny, so it's okay to take a cotton pad and just uh, you know uh, clear your skin in the middle of the day and just give you a little bit of refreshment. The scrubs are um, are um, kind of important for patients who have uh, blackheads. I do like to use it, but I hate using it every day uh, because uh, you can inflame your skin, and with if you overuse uh, scrub, you can actually get the telangiectasias, which is the small uh, broken capillaries with time. And I don't like that. And you can also get like a, um, a reddish hue and that becomes kind of consistent. So we don't want those, but we still, at the same time, you still want to control your comedones and your blackheads and uh, the pores in the, especially on the nose area. So you can use it once a week, okay? So when you use it, don't use uh, your cleanser. So I, that day, just use the uh, exfoliant and that's it, okay? Uh, I like them to concentrate on the T-zone area, especially on the nose. Very gently, uh, you scrub your face, and then um, uh, just don't overdo it, and not more than one minute, okay? Um, and then uh, also, it cannot be those harsh ones that you actually feel like it's uh, damaging your skin, or it's going to, it has to, the pebbles or the uh, micro uh, beads that in it have to be extremely small and very fine, and not so uh, harmful. So I don't like that apricot scrub. Okay, because that apricot, the big one, you know, that big jar that everybody yeah. buys. Okay, I hate that. I can, I only tell them to use it like for the elbows, for the knees. But please do not use it on your face. 
it's just too harsh. I can I can feel like it's almost like stone, and this with time will uh, ruin your skin. Oh, okay. So medications. Some medications who have acne there, I place them on medications. Uh, not necessarily oral medications, but definitely topical medications. I treat my acne uh, with medications, topical. So all those, the cleansers and everything, is important. But my main um, thing is the medication. There are different medications that we use. Uh, there is a topical antibiotic sometimes we use, which is called clindamycin, or if you guys uh, heard about it, which is the dalsin tea, the derma tea. Uh, I use the uh, different, which is the adapalin. Uh, it's a vitamin A derivative, and this is really good for the blackheads. I use something called Epidu, which has benzoyl peroxide and um, also adapalin. Uh, there is written A, or now acrotin, uh, here available in Saudi. All this depends on what kind of acne they have. So in order for me to push my patients a little bit and help them with their skin and quicker the response, we do the in-clinic treatments. One of my favorite ones is peels. Uh, not necessarily the peeling that we do for rejuvenation, which is a deep kind of peel, uh, but actually a very superficial peel. So uh, these peels have a combination of salicylic acid, of hydroxy acid, of glycolic acid. Uh, there are specific combinations that have within it, specific for acne. Usually it dries out the acne and sloughs it off. And that really helps it. And so also, uh, with the inflammatory acne, it actually kind of uh, calms it down. So you get quicker response. Uh, I like to put them on four uh, sessions, uh, every week one session, depending on the response, depending on there's no irritation uh, with it. And, uh, and we just evaluate them after they finish and we see how they are. Uh, there's a specific way and how they integrate. I integrate the peels with the uh, with the medication. So these really have to be under medical supervision. It cannot just be um, done haphazardly. And the other kind of treatment that I like is actually facials, um, acne facial treatments. We have so many here, and I'm, you know, in this day and age, thank God we have uh, so many types of uh, uh, of uh, facials. Uh, these facials um, are also uh, can be for acne and for sensitive skin, uh, can be for acne and uh, rosacea, uh, type of prone skin. Uh, so it has. I prefer the ones that are under medical supervision definitely, uh, because being chosen by your doctor, um, they know what you need, and then um, you are placed on the proper uh, facial. Because a lot of the um, facials outside, uh, they are. Um, uh, not really experienced people, they're just, you know, going through the motions. Uh, but when you're placed under a medical supervision, uh, the, your, your acne is actually targeted. So they uh, know what to do and what not to do. The other thing is sometimes they try to clear the skin very quickly from one session. And I get this a lot from the patients. They come very upset that it's not totally clear from one session. And they feel that they haven't gotten their uh, money's worth. This is a wrong concept. Because sometimes we don't want you to clear from one session. We can't clear from one session unless we become very harsh with your skin. That means we have to really dig in, and this, and on the long run, becomes harmful. Like I said, like the exfoliant. Um, if you use a harsh exfoliant, uh, and yes, your skin becomes clear in the middle, but in the long run, it will damage your skin. It's the same concept with the facials. If we do it too quickly and we try to quick, to quick, to clear you, a fast. Okay, and from one session, by harming the skin, we're actually not doing you benefit. So sometimes I need my patients to do it um, and, and stages. So even removing the blackheads is done in stages. So uh, it might take two sessions, it might take three sessions, some patients might take four sessions, okay? Uh, but we do get there uh, at some point. So you need to be also patient with your facials. Don't overdo it. Uh, but at the same time, don't neglect it. And there's also crystal peels that also helps with the pigmentation. I do like the peels uh, because they also help with the pigmentation. Like I told you, a lot of the patients here, after they um, they uh, they their acne goes away, uh, they pigment and they have brown spots. So the peels also help. Uh, a new treatment, which is a greater frequency micro needling, we do have some reports saying that it actually helps with the uh, uh, with the, with uh, shrinkage of the oil glands. So it kind of helps with the inflammatory acne. People, especially if we can't put them uh, on racutane, we can't put them on doxycycline, we can't put them on a lot of, uh, except topical treatments, we use the radio frequency. I have seen results where the pores actually improve and also their acne uh, kind of improves. So uh, this could be also an option. It's not for everyone, not everybody responds, but it does uh, help some people.
Okay, so uh, we got your acne controlled, uh, we've done uh, the medications, we've done the uh, peels, everything is great, um, and we controlled your acne. Uh, now it's time to take care of, of the, the post acne uh, problems. So what are the post acne problems? Most of it is pigmentation, like I talked about it right now, or scarring, okay? Uh, so pigmentation is simple. We might, we might do something like uh, the peel specific for pigmentation. Uh, we can do um, mesotherapy treatments where we actually um, uh, do injections or micro-needling, um, infusing your skin with, uh, with lightening uh, treatments. Um, and um, also sometimes, like I said, we can use the microdermabrasion, uh, which is a crystal peel. So that also helps. Uh, scarring. And this is the most difficult uh, to treat, but luckily in this AJ we actually do have a new technology and they're, uh, they're evolving every, uh, every year. Uh, one of my favorite treatments for acne scars is the functional laser. It's a, it's a, a little bit of an aggressive treatment, uh, yes, possible side effects in some people, but not everyone. Uh, we usually, I like to do it medium uh, strength first, and then if she responds very well, we start doing the stronger treatments um, after the, the next sessions. And we have seen um, dramatic improvements in the acne scars. Uh, but usually I don't like to do it unless the acne is controlled. So basically we control the acne first, and then I can start working on your uh, scar. Uh, the other uh, treatment that we also use for acne scars now is the radio frequency microneedling. We have seen good results also with that. There's a specific head, especially with the machine that we have here. Uh, it's called Ellis's, and the head has more needles and stronger um, uh, waves. Uh, so we also have seen improvements, especially if people don't want to go through the possible side effects of the fractional laser, and they don't want that downtime, because it's less, less downtime with the uh, radiofrequency microneedling. 